Silence, please. Um, Russian missile silo? Is that what it was? I didn't want to look at that. I didn't want to look at it. Oh my God. Yeah, so we pulled up and it, it looked pretty legit. Uh, it looked like it was definitely shut down. The tank busters that was in front of the building and stuff like that. So it definitely looked like nobody was there. So I thought it'd be cool, you know, just go up for a casual little, casual little walk. Check out the uh, premises. Suddenly you hear this really, really loud, very authoritative Russian loudspeaker go off. And once you hear something in Russian and you're pretty close to anything Russian military, you just kind of get the fuck out of there. I try to be cool about it. Like, I tried not to race off too fast. What's the what's the difference between like running and walking? Like it's a brisk waddle of, of terror. <coughs> brisk waddle of terror. Uh, yeah, and then uh, yeah, we got the fuck out of there as fast as we could. So we were trying to get away from what we thought was some Russian military chasing after us. Uh, we just drove through these fields. It was quite hectic. I managed to tear off uh, the whole exhaust system from the car. You could see it hanging down, scraping the road from behind. Our first stop was to find any Russian mechanic that could help fix it. Took us the most part of five minutes. Uh, super friendly, super helpful, really interested in what we were doing. Uh, whilst the guy welded it, he, uh, he literally put some sunglasses on. That was his mask. Uh, didn't use them half time. His friend held it, welded it, took 20 minutes. So, we were getting to Kazakhstan and the roads to the border were just terrible. Like, yeah, they weren't really roads, were they? They were just mud tracks. Yeah, pretty much. Following lorries. And it was very silly. We finally got to the border around midnight. The bike went in first and the guards went out to check the car to see what was in it. First thing they see was a ukulele and, and that was it. Then playing the ukulele, just chilling out. And that was the car check and off I went. So we've just left Russia. We're in no man's land between Russia and Kazakhstan. Um, I think there's going to be better roads in no man's land than there were in Russia. Legitimately, we didn't, I don't remember where we woke up or how. But we parked up on the side of the road on this like mud track. We were really close to the city the night before we got Yes, no, we slept up. in the fucking cars that night. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah, yeah, that's why we, we don't remember, remember it, it was the shit. Road. We woke up in the cars, like we were all pretty groggy. And then we finally just entered into the town. Guy pulls us over and we, we had heard that there were secret police that were all over the place that were in our marked cars. And literally with no time, like going through this town, we got pulled over by this sketchy non-marked car. Guy gets out, looks like he's got some stern words because he's like pointing fingers and stuff. And then he's, he, he tells him that hang on for a second, walks back over to his car, brings over this huge bag. And then from that bag, he just pulls out a gigantic lamb leg. Just like hands him over the fucking lamb leg. And it's like, who just gives you a lamb leg on the side of the road? You don't see that shit. But Kazakhstan, yeah. And then yeah, that's what he gave us for dinner. And he was literally just saying, welcome to my country. Thank you for visiting. Now I can tell you how fast Kazakhstan is. It's fast. Really fast. It's nothing but horizon everywhere you look. Camels, cows, just grazing everywhere. But the people of Kazakhstan are so friendly. And all they want to, do, to get to know is, who are you? And uh, what are you doing here in Kazakhstan? So they all just want to get to know you. They're all but friendly. So we've been driving for quite a while. Uh, we knew there weren't many fuel stations coming up, but the last one we saw had about 20 massive Kazakh trucks in it. So we thought, we'll skip this, we'll find the next one. Turns out there wasn't the next one, and you can't let a diesel tank go empty, so we had to pull it aside. Should be pretty nice. It's pretty good, my legs are pretty white. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, we're basically just setting up camp. Sending the uh, micro off to get diesel fuel. There we go, the details yeah, are actually and... irrelevant to the situation. <laughs> <laughs> Everything should be good. We were really lucky, uh, we managed to flag down one of those trucks coming past. He agreed for a bit of money to siphon out the diesel into our car. So we got a really good break with that. Uh, the problem was it was blue diesel. So the government put to dye it to permanently dye your, uh, the innards of your engine and tank. So if anyone does look at our tank, they'll know we use Kazakh government fuel, but I think we'll be fine from now on. 
<laughs> somewhere in the middle of Kazakhstan. Nothing for miles. Ran out of diesel. Luckily, a friendly truck driver came over and gave us his blue diesel, which we think is some sort of government blend tax free type thing. Or it's jet fuel. Or it's jet fuel. Either way, um, I just. Felicia's gonna fly. <laughs> <laughs> We were just driving on the road, we've been driving all day and we just found this sort of track off to the side decided to go up it, see what was up there and it was like this, this old quarry sort of got out of the cars, have a look around and discover over the other side of it is this just giant crater that would have been ideal for camping in Now, I don't know how we got the cars in there, we had to go up this super steep slope and then off-roading through grass and things and then down this other rocky slope. And yeah, then we had a feast. So then once we found our, uh, our crater campsite, um, we just decided to cut it into kebabs and threw on a bunch of veggies and then a bunch of lamb leg meat. Uh, how hard are those cold? Succulent so lamb leg meat. They're burning my face. And, uh, okay. and had one of the best barbecues I think we've had on the entire convoy. So do you want to move all around? Oh, yeah, sure. 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 After three days of uh, going around in Kazakhstan, we got Wi-Fi. <laughs> we finished dropping Lucas off and we were just driving, we're driving towards Uzbekistan now. And we find this inspection pit at the side of the road and we were just like, oh sweet, we can check our cars here, see how they're doing. They've been, oh, been through some rough time now. Let's have a look, check them all out, get this amazing photo. Steal up, but it's now come up again. So Rich claiming he had no other issues with the car. May have lied slightly, <laughs> uh, apart from this massive hole. Where does that lead? Uh, so that goes straight into the boot. So any dust or off-roading we do, that may possibly get flicked up by this tire, for example. But yeah, like that. Uh, it goes straight into the boot. So everything in the boot is dusty as hell. <laughs> we didn't realise quite where we were and what road we were on. This was the beginning of Fury Road. Remember kids, the more electrical outlets sharing one device, <laughs> the safer it is. <laughs> the safer it's gonna be. Well, As always, technology has failed us. So, we come up with a better solution that might kill us. With no other options, we will warm said can of baked beans on the oh, engine block. So we just wanted to thank everybody who subscribed to us on YouTube so far. Hey, if you haven't subscribed, please. Click the button, there's a button that's on the side there. Please, please, stop! Ah!